Okay, in example number three, we want to be able to prove that the area of a circle with radius r is pi r squared. Now we're going to use a trig trigonometric substitution. Okay, so a number of practical problems require us to integrate algebraic functions that contain an expression of the form square root of a squared minus x squared, square root of a squared plus x squared, or x squared minus a squared, square root of that, excuse me. Sometimes the best way to perform the integration is to make a trigonometric substitution that gets rid of the root sign. So we need, we need to take a look at the unit circle when we're talking about this. So a long time ago, you know, we were told that it's true, but the only way to actually prove it is by integration for the area of a circle being pi r squared. Now for simplicity, um, let's place here, you see the circle with its center at the origin so its equation is then x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And so if we want to solve for this equation, okay, so if we solve for that equation, we have x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Solving for this equation for y would then ultimately give us plus or minus the square root of r squared minus x squared. Okay, so because we know that the circle is symmetric with respect to both axes, then the total area is four times the area in the quadrant. So you can see here that you have four pieces within that circle. So the part of the circle in the first quadrant, okay, is given by the following. So if we take a look at the first quadrant, Okay, we know that y is going to equal the square root of r squared minus x squared. But the domain means that it's in between 0 and r. And therefore, we would say that this is one-fourth of the area, and one-fourth of the area would then mean we would need to integrate a value from 0 to r, the square root of r squared minus x squared dx. Now, to simplify this integral, we would like to make a substitution that turns the r squared minus x squared into the square of something. Now, if we look at the trigonometric identity, and let's talk about that identity here. So we have the trigonometric identity, which is one minus the sine squared theta, which is equal to the cosine squared theta. Okay. What we can say here is that we have r squared minus r squared times the sine squared theta. And if we factor out an r squared, we would end up with 1 minus the sine squared theta, which then actually equals r squared times the cosine, cosine squared theta. And then from here, we would make that substitution. And that substitution would then be x is then equal to r sine theta. Now, since we know that there is a restriction that goes from 0 to r, we also have to restrict theta. So by restricting theta, 
would be in between zero and pi over two, which is 90 degrees. And therefore, we have dx, which is equal to r times the cosine theta d theta. So when we're looking at the square root of r squared minus x squared can now be the following. You would have the square root of r squared minus r squared sine squared theta, which then becomes the square root of r squared cosine squared theta, which then results in r times the cosine of theta. And again, looking at the restriction, and that's because the cosine of theta in the first quadrant is greater than or equal to zero when theta is in between zero and pi over two. So now we're gonna use the substitution rule. So we would have the following. We wanna integrate from zero to r of the square root of r squared minus x squared dx, which then equals zero to pi over two times r cosine of theta times r cosine theta d theta which then ultimately gives us factor out the r squared going from 0 to pi over 2 and now that becomes cosine squared d theta So recall here that the cosine squared theta is equal to one half times one plus the cosine of two theta using our identities. So now we're gonna integrate. So we know that a fourth of that circle is gonna equal r squared going from zero to pi over two times the cosine squared theta d theta. And then if we use our identity by substituting cosine squared theta, we can factor out the one half r squared going from zero to pi over two, one plus cosine of two theta d theta. And now we can go ahead and then find the antiderivative. So find the antiderivative, we have the constant of one half r squared. 
So we have the antiderivative, which is theta, plus one half sine of two theta. And again, going from zero to pi over two. So then we have one half r squared if we plug in pi over 2 for theta we get pi over 2 if we plug in pi over 2 the sine of pi is going to give you 0 And then we're going to have 0 plus 0. So that means we're going to minus the quantity of 0. And so ultimately, we're going to get 1 fourth pi r squared. And so what we've done is we've actually proved a quarter of that circle which basically means if you multiply this entire thing by 4, then you would eventually have the area of the circle.